Hey, Chris Sev here. In this video, we're gonna talk about Tailwind's CSS Grid classes. The more I use CSS Grid, the more I realize how powerful it is. So in this video, we'll do a lot of CSS Grid kind of fundamentals, but also use them in the Tailwind world with Tailwind's CSS Grid classes. And I didn't realize how good the Tailwind CSS Grid classes are. I thought it was gonna be really hard to translate over into Tailwind, but it's actually a really, really nice syntax. So if we are looking at the display properties under Tailwind CSS, down here in the layout section on the left, there we go, display, grid is the one we want. So if we want to set something to using CSS grid, we're gonna give it this grid class, just like we would have given a flex class or a block class or any of those other layout classes. So to go further here, let's scroll down into the grid section. And these are the main grid CSS classes we're gonna need for this video. And grid template columns is where we start. So there's two things to CSS grid that you need to know, and you're gonna set a number of columns and you're going to set a number of rows. So you're basically defining your overall grid. Now, the cool thing about this is that CSS grid is more for like 3D layouts where there's an X and Y axis. And in Flexbox, you're just usually talking about a single axis or a single axis here. But the cool thing is that you can mix and match both and use both of them together to create some really, really cool layouts. I'm gonna go into CodePen here. Brand new CodePen, haven't touched it yet. I'm gonna go into our CSS settings here, scroll down, and I'm gonna add the Tailwind style sheet. And we're at 2.0.2 for our version, click that. And now we have the CSS class style sheet here. All right, so let's hit save. And now let's see if we can't build out a CSS grid with Tailwind pretty quickly. Let's start by giving ourselves an over encompassing kind of section. We're gonna go div and let's do a class in here and let's go for background of maybe um, blue at 800. Actually, let's go lighter blue at 400. Let's go min height is screen. Let's go flex and let's go for items center and justify center. So we don't actually have anything. I'm gonna do a div here and say grid goes here. And let me increase the size on this. Let's go to 18, cool. So next up, let's define a grid. Let's say we have a grid of maybe 10 items. Actually, let's go for nine so that we can do a three by three grid. So we'll say div and let's say a number in here times nine. And I'm using Emmet for this, so press tab there. And now we have a grid of nine different items. Sorry, we don't have the grid yet, we just have the nine items. So let's show how easy this is to make a three by three grid. We can say class grid. This grid class won't do anything on its own except for set display to grid. But you see that nothing is really laid out here. To do this, we're going to need to actually define our columns. So we're gonna say grid columns three. And now we should have three columns. There we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you'll notice that we didn't have to define the number of rows we wanted. As soon as this thing got to three columns, it said, okay, just go to the next row. So it kind of auto creates the rows for us. If we wanted, we could say grid rows three, and that would be building out a three by three grid. Now, the cool thing about this is even if you set this to grid rows two, it would still overflow into the next row, which would be the third row. So I kind of like leaving out the grid rows because it'll just auto flow into the next row unless you really, really need to define a specific grid. Okay, so let's give these a little bit more styles just so we can get something that looks a little bit cooler. I'm gonna select all these class. Let's go for background is uh, white and let's go for padding is three rounded and that should be good right there. Okay, so now notice that we are here, but we don't really have a gap in between these. So something that you might think to do is say, okay, well, that's easy enough. Let's do a margin right of two, margin bottom of two. But then you kind of have to manually do this for every single grid item, which isn't the most efficient. And let's say you added more grid items or things started moving around. It's not the best 
for laying out your grid. So grid comes with a really cool thing and the Tailwind classes come with a really cool thing to mirror that. We can just say gap is two. And that will build out a gap in between all of the grid items. And that's amazing because in Flexbox, you would have had to define margins on each one. In grid, you just say on the parent, hey, I want a gap of two and it applies it to everything. So what we could do beyond this is add even more rows or sorry, more items and it automatically flows correctly and the gap stays where it should be. Now to take this a step further, we can actually specify the gap for a specific axis. So we can say, okay, I want a gap of Y of two. And now that will only give a gap in the rows. And I can say gap X of two. And you can even mix and match. So say gap Y of four. So the gap is bigger for the rows than it is for the columns. Or you can just shorthand this and say gap is four all the way around. And uh, that would be an equal gap in between all your items. So that's a very, very cool thing there. I want to talk about two more really cool features in Tailwind's CSS grid classes. The next one is for responsive. We can say, okay, well, grid columns three, and since we're doing a mobile first design, we say, okay, probably we want one column on mobile. So let's get everything to one column on mobile, but let's say as we grow to bigger columns, uh, bigger screen sizes, we probably should show more columns. So we can say here on medium screens, grid, columns of two, and on large screens, grid columns of three. So now as we go along and we start stretching this out, there's two columns, there's three columns, and you can mix and match those classes using CSS grid so that you can build out some really, really strong grids for your websites, apps, whatever you're doing with Tailwind. So that's really cool there. Let's see, you can also build out rows doing the same exact technique. The final feature that I want to talk about in this video is the ability to create grid sizes that go beyond the specified columns. So what I mean by that is let's bring this back down to the three columns and let's say, okay, well, this is cool and all. Let's bring our gap down right here. I probably want a different grid than just this equal three by three grid. I could want to do maybe a sidebar on the left here. I could maybe want to do like a big three across on the top or two across. Tailwind comes with some really cool classes to do this. Let's go take a look. Here we have grid column start and end and we have grid row start and end. So if I hit this, you can say column span one, column span two, and this will basically say, hey, I want you as a single item to span two columns. Everything right now is just spanning one column. So let's go back to our code pen and say, okay, for this first one, column, span two. And just like that, you have this one span two columns, everything gets auto flow down to the next row, and everything looks pretty clean. And you can mix and match wherever this needs to go. So let's say on the seven column span two right there. And that goes out to two. So you can build out really, really amazing grids, you can put like background images on these so that they start flowing and you can create kind of a masonry grid uh, style. You can also do row span. So let's say on three, I want to span two. So let's go over here, row span. Actually, let's do three and see how that looks. And there we go. So that spans three down there, six, seven gets bumped down because it can't just take up this one column. It has to take up two like we told it to. And now you have a really cool kind of layout and it was really easy to create because all we had to do was some grid classes, which Tailwind made really nice for us. So I hope that was helpful. You have grid classes that are easy to use. You have responsive capabilities using Tailwind's grid classes. You have the ability to create these really, really fancy grids using the spans. And we have the ability to create a gap in between each section using the gap classes. Now there's more to the Tailwind CSS grid classes here. Definitely take a look at those, the auto flow, auto columns, auto rows one we didn't talk about. But overall, this video should give you enough strength in the Tailwind's grid classes to build out some really cool layouts. Thanks for watching.